Thank you. Um, I've got to make a massive decision. Uh, and the decision for me is a very, very difficult one. Very difficult one because it involves lots of things, lots of people, and lots of different views. And the decision is this. We have to decide what we're doing with internet access within church day and school. And what we're faced with is this. Do I, as head teacher, and do I advise the governing body to remove all filters that we have attached to internet access within this school and allow free access to every student within this school? So that you can visit any website that you so choose. And that is a big decision. And to help me with that decision, I've got two panels here uh, that are going to make a variety of comments about this debate this morning. And I've also got, right behind me, uh, a resident expert, Dave Gardner, who is our network manager at Churchdown School, who will pick up any technical issues. But first, we are going to deal with the principle. And the question that I'm going to put to these two panels, first of all, is a simple one. And I'm going to expect a short, snappy reply from them. And this is the question. Should we remove all filters and allow students free and open access to the internet? Or keep filters and restrict access to what they can see? Ms. James, let me come to you first. Um, I believe we have a duty of care towards our students to protect you from anything harmful. And therefore, because of harmful material online, we should keep our filters. Thank you. We should definitely look filters, they're a waste of time. We don't ban dictionaries just because they've got rude words in them. Absolutely, keep filters. Uh, we wouldn't allow anybody to come to school and talk to any people at any time, so why would we do so on the internet? It's about time we trusted young people. It's about time they learned to look after themselves and uh, us to stop the panic. We don't take responsibility for anything else in school and proper behaviour, so we're not going to take responsibility for them. They access it on their phones anyway, so why don't we do it when we need to? We need to stop stifling education by popular sites that are relevant to children who also have a certain selection of filters. How do we keep your farm to start possible evenly in favour of the We need to have no filters, it's a new modern era and technology enjoyment. Well, it would simply stop all work being done, even teachers, but perhaps not be as productive as they are now. Okay, let me come to Dave Garner now. Dave, what are your concerns in terms of technical issues that the school might face? The technical issues that we would face is um, we have got 100 megabits for ourselves, so we've got 1,500, 1,600 users that are using that connection. Um, YouTube is now broadcasting much of its videos at 1080p, which um, downloads at about 20 megabits per second, so whatever happens, we can't go above that 100 megabytes. Um, so the more people that use it, the more people that stream internet, uh, the less, the more impact it's going to have on performance for everybody else. The main concern we would have is um, viruses. Um, it's a scary world on the internet and although antivirus gives you the tools you need to deal with the viruses, it's not, it doesn't prevent you from actually getting them in the first place. Um, and not only can viruses steal your identity, it can steal your money, more importantly, in a school, if they steal sensitive information about our students, and that was out in the public domain, Mr. Packer will tell you what impact that would have on us as a school if we lost all of our information to a dangerous ring of, of uh, unauthorised access. Okay. So, some concerns, some concerns. Let me put this question to the panel now. Should we not, as a school, be educating these people here? and their colleagues in the other years in school, just to be responsible users. Responsible users, and as someone said on the panel, trust them. Comments? Yeah, we should. We should. We should. We should. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We should. Yeah. Yeah. Mature, mature adults, yeah. 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 You know, we don't take responsibility for our literacy in the field. We don't take responsibility for our behaviour in lessons. So why do we take responsibility? We never think it's just no responsibility we have on our shoulders. Yes. Surely in school you have a way of monitoring, so by lifting them, by well, actually educating them anyway, because they were given the environment to go and make mistakes, obviously, that the more safe they are, the more cousins they have. But obviously we need to open up 
decided to let the race was out there and then the compensation of their teachers and the Thank you. A conversation with the parents uh, at a parents' seat in between the parents and myself went something like this. I explained to them what we were thinking of doing and the parents said, you must be mad. They spend all day on Facebook and Twitter and never get any work done. Do you think that would be the case? Yeah. But they had to say that they focus on school anyway. So <coughs> what's the system with monitoring at the moment? How do we monitor uh, use of the internet at the moment for <coughs> staff and pupils at the moment? We've got a different different levels of filtering for, for year seven from uh, year seven right through to six more. The staff have their own level as well of uh, filtering. Um, whatever happens, we would need to retain the right to monitor. Uh, not only internet use, but also email use, because we have a duty of care to the kids. And um, more importantly, is where does responsibility lie? If someone was bullying using their phone on, um, on the school premises, using Facebook, then I would argue that the responsibility would lie with that user. If they were using the school's equipment and the school's internet connection, and they were bullying people using the school's facilities, then I think the responsibility the responsibility for the owners of them more so be on the school. Thank you. Thank you for that point. We asked for a, a couple of written questions from years 7 to 10. We picked this one out as the best one. Uh, I'll put this to the panel as well. Why doesn't the school let us use and bring in our own phones, tablets and laptops and have free access to the school's Wi-Fi system during our lessons? What do we think about that? Well, we have that happening in the sick form anyway, so um, it's all very well, Mr. Gardner, saying we've got a concern about viruses, but certainly 200 students are already uh, not using, uh, are filter free, and um, so we haven't had a virus problem already. I, I, can't, I can't see why that would, that would suddenly grow. And I think we should be teaching students personal responsibility, looking after their things, and bringing them in. I just think it's absolute lunacy that. Kids at home have got free access to whatever they want, and yet they turn up to school and suddenly it becomes a barrier. And I know I'm going off the point of it here, but as for the bullying issue and what Lucy was saying about we can't trust kids anyway, we should be dealing with bullies whether they're on, online or whether they're in the playground <coughs> bashing somebody in the face. We should be dealing with it the same way. Just because it's online shouldn't be a reason for banging on, uh, you know, banging online. Mr. Well, let's round of applause. Anyone 
has got a question or would like to make a comment about what we've been talking about today? Thank you. Sir, so, could you say, like, for example, you already said, like, you don't know that the teacher would just block even the different kind of block internet and the size of, you know, for example, the mini even or broad use that, I don't know, internet, you know, to, like, form like information on, yeah. for example, like, on the internet, um, a bunch of size of block. Well, you know, pretty far on the you side. So, I don't know the reason, but it's already was said. The teacher model on everything, like, everything on the TSD, but they cannot actually monitor all the ones. Right. So, that, Again, the point that's made over here is about educating for responsible use. You suggested making sure people understand how they can avoid viruses, use fire, or sort of protection on their own individual devices. Dave, is that a possibility? Well, um, people can be educated and have to deal with viruses um, and give them the tools to do that. That obviously would take time um, in the curriculum for them to show them how to use it and compute it. But um, I mean, the tools are there for us to deal with viruses, but really we want to stop them before they get here rather than just be more reactive and then once they're here, deal with them. Okay, thank you. Well, like, surely we should be teaching young people that anyway. That's a really important life skill. And also, I'm really cynical about this idea that it's a really dark, dangerous world out there on the internet because a lot of stuff is actually very, very, very difficult to find. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask each member of the panel for a closing summary comment and then we're going to take a vote from the audience, okay? So, a closing comment from some of you, Ms. Arkell. Uh, I think the internet is, is merely a, a tool and that we should be educating people to be responsible and we should be, we should be promoting trust within our community, not withdrawing the important tools. Um, I think the internet is a fantastic place. I think you can be responsible and you can be trusted, but it's still our responsibility. It's 2013, it's about time we just woke up and just got with the rest of the world with this. Um, in order to unfold to the internet effectively, we can't afford to, we don't have the means to, so the yeah, whole idea is currently untenable. They're taking the because they're doing it anyway. So it doesn't make a difference whether they're doing it on our computers or whether they're really instilled in it. So no one's left this school seriously damaged to be used filters, why should you think not? This school's motto is opportunity learning success. So far we're stifling every single one of those points through not allowing people to access enough relevant information on the internet. And we're blocking it by being afraid of this kind of floodgate scenario when actually in school we have the facilities to actually kind of half monitor this already. And if it's such an important issue that we can find the money somewhere, we've been through that the students could end of the day to their education and their future. Unfiltering this time would be a waste of time because we don't have the resources to do it properly. Okay, and close the part there. We can offer partial filtering, it's not an all or nothing scenario. Um, at the moment, six farmers have got a more open access, but that is not completely open access. So I think it's something that can be categorised. Thank you. Okay, it's to you, it's the vote. Those of you who are in favour and have been persuaded in the argument that the school should remove all filters and give you free access to the internet, can you raise your right hand? Yes. No! <laughs> okay, hands down. And those against? <laughs> and abstention. Those who are not sure. Those not sure at the moment. I think an overwhelming victory for the removal of this. Thank you.